Welcome to Hope Today. It is a fantastic Monday. I'm here with my friend Sydney. I'm Amanda, and we are grateful that you today would find confident hope in Christ, as it says in Romans 12. Oh, I love that confident hope in Christ. That what it's all about. And you know, today is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And just up in a moment, Tom and I had a chance to have a conversation with Rabbi Jason Sobel about the spiritual significance of the day. He also shared the signs and secrets of the Messiah from both the Old and the New Testament. Amanda, there is so much revelation when it comes to things of Jesus and how you know, there's all these mysteries and things that are hidden. And it's so incredible That's that we're right. able to I do this. When I hear um, rabbis or people who have rabbinical studies and then they also understand Jesus as Messiah, it amazes me. And it literally hearing them and all the dots connecting does build my confident hope in Christ. Like, you know, God is a God who fails not. Yeah. He is the one in control. Like we are on God's timetable and if we can miss it, if we yeah. don't take time to learn from like rabbis like uh, today, what we're about to hear. And I like how you're talking about like connecting the dots. And you know, we just want to for a moment just highlight Yom Kippur. So just a little background on it. It is the Day of Atonement. Today is considered the holiest day on the Jewish and the Hebrew calendar. And you know, Jesus Christ is our atonement for our sins. It says it in First John. And here's a little background that I did. So if you're wondering, where is this in the Bible? So when Mo Moses, it, it dates back to Moses when there was the Ten Commandments and he broke it after the Israelites made the golden calf. Well, God called for the Day of Atonement after Moses. Moses made the Ten Commandments again. And so that's where we get it in the Bible. And this is a day of repentance. It's a day of just really being introspective. And, you know, I just think about Jesus, you know, for us. So we think about how his blood was shed for us on Calvary and that he rose again. But if it wasn't for Jesus, if he didn't die for us, if he didn't rise again, like, I can't even imagine what life would be like. So today we just encourage you as it's Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, just to be introspective and to seek your heart and maybe those hidden sins and things that are inside of you and within you that you need to just lay them before Yeshua, before Jesus. Amen, Sydney. That is such a powerful word. And I think of the generations and how well the Israelite people really told their children. You know, they built altars and they, the Lord told them to so that they would tell the story. What happened there in that place? And I feel like we have to improve on that where we're sharing the good news of Jesus in our life, but his word with the next generation. Talking about that, my husband and I this past weekend had the opportunity to speak at a young adults retreat. And the one made me a, a little bracelet. I was nice. like, oh, just but their heart for God and how they're seeking him and desiring them. And we were in Romans 12. And let me tell you, Pastor Dave, quizzed us and you had to know it word for word and yeah the guys won over the girls but let me tell you we gave a great fight so it was just good to you know impact the next generation and i believe that's so important and vital today yeah, yeah the generation should know god but when we come back in 60 seconds the signs and secrets of the messiah with rabbi jason sobel we'll be back right back you don't want to miss it Every now and then, life gets the best of us, and we need a reminder to keep calm and trust God. Simple but striking, the Keep Calm and Trust God box of blessings provides messages of reassurance to help carry you through tough and challenging times. These small cards fit into the palm of your hand and will turn your focus to the one who is in control of everything. Inside, you'll find 51 colorful double-sided cards featuring a combination of inspirational scripture verses and faith-based quotes. Add it to a get well basket or use it to encourage a teacher, family member, or friend, or save it for the times you need encouragement. Be sure to ask for the Keep Calm and Trust God box of blessings when you give today. It's our way of saying thanks as you encourage others by providing life-changing Christian television through Cornerstone TV. Call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. Raised in a Jewish home in New Jersey, Rabbi Jason Sobel dedicated much of his life to finding truth. And after years of seeking and studying, he encountered God and found his true destiny as a Jewish follower of Jesus, of Yeshua. All the traditions Rabbi Sobel grew up with took on a new depth of meaning as God connected ancient wisdom with the teachings of the Messiah. 
Today is the founder of Fusion Global, Global, a New York Times bestselling author, TV host of the program, The Chosen Unveiled, and he brings us his new book, Signs and Secrets of the Messiah. Rabbi Jason Sobel, welcome back to Hope Today. Shalom, thank you for having me. It's great to be with you. Oh, it's wonderful to have you again. So, so good. Uh, listen, I want to dive into the book in just a second, but I have to ask you, today's Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the holiest day on the Jewish calendar. What's that mean for you as a believer in the Messiah? Yeah, absolutely. We are in a very important season on the biblical calendar. It began 10 days earlier with Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, which begins, it's the biblical new year, but it's also a call to return to God, to examine our lives. And each of these holidays also have a prophetic uh, significance to it as well. So practically, Yom Kippur is a day, number one, where we remember the atonement that has been provided for us through Yeshua, our Messiah. Jewish people at this time are fasting and praying and seeking to get their name inscribed in the book of life, the Sefer HaChaim, for another year. But through Messiah, we know our names have been indelibly inscribed in the book of life through faith in him, not just for one year, but for all of eternity. We don't have to guess. But Yom Kippur finds its ultimate fulfillment in Messiah, but it's not yet fully fulfilled because, A, I still sin and fall short. So I need to examine my life and say, how can I you know, get get to the next level with God, grow in my faith, become more conformed to his image and likeliness. What things do I need to turn from? But also we're waiting for the day when salvation will come to Israel and the nations and to the entire world. So as long as there's people in the world that don't know him, as long as my Jewish brothers and sisters don't know him, Yom Kippur is an important day to fast and pray that God would open hearts and minds to turn to him. You know, Rabbi, it's so important for we're just praying and believing for minds and hearts to be open to Yeshua, to Jesus. There's such prophetic significance with Yom Kippur, and even it's now a new year on the Jewish, on the Hebrew calendar, on God's calendar. Can you unpack for us about 5784? That's the new year that we're in right now. What does it mean? Yeah, absolutely. Very significant time and season. We just did a whole uh, message on in depth on this new year, but uh, this, first of all, this decade that we're in, the 80s, this is 5784 on the Hebrew calendar, the decade of the 80s is the decade of breakthrough, and I believe God is wanting to take us out of Egypt, our places of personal confinement and restriction, and this year, 5784, is the year of the open door. Four in Hebrew is the letter Dalit. It literally means door. So God is opening doors to opportunities. He's opening the doors to salvation and to do new things in our lives and in the world. I love that. I love the open door. What could be better, right? An open door for so many things. Well, thank, thank you for sharing that. We want to talk about your book, Signs and Secrets of the Messiah. Fresh look at the miracles. So let's go right into that first miracle, the wedding at Cana and Jesus turning the water into wine. We've heard about it. We've heard probably different teachings on it. Give us some of the significance that you've discovered in there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, part of our passion, as you know, is connecting the old and the new so people can see the Bible in high definition in its original context. So the first thing we have to ask is, why is the first miracle Jesus did, Yeshua, turning the water into wine? Well, think about it. The New Testament is trying to show him, especially the Gospels, as the promised Messiah who is going to be a greater than Moses, the first Redeemer. So what was the first miracle Moses did? He turned the water into blood, but Jesus doesn't come to bring death. He comes to bring life that we might have it more abundantly. So he turns the water into wine because wine is a symbol of the Messianic kingdom. Okay, let's, let's, let's keep going on that, that, uh, that line. What is the significance of, um, a fir there's so many things in there I love, of, of Mary, uh, you know, asking him before the time, and yet he still does it. And then the six water pots, these heavy water pots they had to go fill, filled all, to, all the way to the brim. What's the significance there? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. I mean, 
you know, as you know, in the, in, the, in John 2, Mary comes to Jesus and says, listen, they've run out of wine. He's like, mom, what does this have to do with me? And what I love is that Mary doesn't take no for an answer. She has what's known as chutzpah, holy chutzpah, holy boldness, right? She's She believes her son's going to act and she's not going to take no for an answer. And he responds by doing this miracle. And he, he says, listen, take the stone pot, six of them, fill them to the brim. Every detail in the Bible is there for a reason. So if it says six, there's a reason why it says six. So what's the significance of six? Well, man, six is a number of man. We were created on the sixth day. In Jewish thought, we fell on the sixth day. Messiah comes to restore everything that was lost. So he does the miracle with the six stone pots of turning the water into wine as a new creation miracle, as a foretaste of the kingdom. The rabbis say that in the kingdom at the marriage supper of the Lamb, we're going to drink wine reserved from the six days of creation. And then when Messiah dies, he dies on Good Friday, which is actually on the biblical calendar, the sixth day of the week. So on the same day we fell is the same day Messiah died on the cross because he comes to reverse the curse and restore the blessing. Wow. Wow. I love that. I love the how God takes those things that are fallen and restores them to life. I love that. Let me ask you, just kind of moving into another one. There's so much in here. And I highly recommend everybody get this book. Uh, it's just got so much in it. Let me ask you about the healing of the man at the pool of Bethesda. This is a very interesting, uh, you know, miracle. Uh, what what uh, special significance do you see in there? Yeah, just even before that, I think it's important to understand that there is understanding the biblical historical context, but also how each one of these miracles has a promise for our lives and for our situations and circumstances. So here's this man at the Pool of Bethesda, hasn't been able to walk for 38 years. And as you all know, I'm a spiritual advisor on The Chosen, and I love this scene uh, in The Chosen but can't walk for 38 years. And if there's a number, again, in the Bible, it's there for a reason. What's interesting about the number 38 is according to Deuteronomy chapter 2, 38 is the number of years that Israel actually wandered in the wilderness. They were there for 40, but they wandered, in, they wandered because of their unbelief for 38 years. And so... That's significant because 38 is also the numerical value of the Hebrew word libo, which means his heart. So Hebrew is alphanumeric. That means every number is written with a letter. There's no Roman numerals in the Bible. So his heart equals 38, 38 years of wandering in the wilderness. Yeshua was testing this man to see what was in his heart, 38, so that he didn't have to wander for 38 years and die in the wilderness like Israel did Yeshua was restoring to this man hope, and he was saying to this man, listen, if you have faith and believe and do what I ask you to do, take up your bat mat and walk, you will be healed and made whole and walk into your promise, into your future. If you fail the test and don't believe, you'll die like Israel in the wilderness and your unbelief. And all of us have that same choice to make. Maybe you've been stuck in a difficult situation, but the Lord is extending to you an opportunity to get up and to step into a better future than your past. Rabbi, I love that so much. God is inviting us into these opportunities to step up and to step into him. And speaking like going down the road of, you know, with numbers, the multiplication, God is a God of multiplication. Can you talk to us about the feeding of the 5,000 and the significance of that with Yeshua? Yeah, absolutely. I love this miracle and it actually does tie in to 5784. Uh, as well, because in connection to the four, this is the fourth miracle that Jesus performs in the book of John, okay? And what's significant is, you know, why does he do this miracle? Well, first of all, it's trying to show him as the greater than Moses, right? So in a sense, Moses... Uh, Parted, Moses parted the Red Sea, Yeshua walks on the water. Moses, through Moses, God brings manna from heaven. 
But through Jesus, he multiplies the bread and the fish, five loaves and two fish, totaling the number seven. The fact that there were seven is significant. Seven, as we know, is a number of completion, but it's also the number of trust. Think about it for a moment. Uh, seven is about trust in the sense that six days God gave the mana, but they had to collect a double portion that would last for the seventh day as well because they were to do no work on the seventh day. You have the sabbatical year, work the land for six years, let it rest on the seventh. Well, that takes a great faith to say, okay, I'm not going to work my land and I'm going to trust that it's going to bear fruit and I am going to uh, be fed. So seven is trusting God to possess your promise in face of the impossible and the improbable. There's seven Canaanite peoples in the land of Canaan in the promised land. Jericho, they're called to walk around the city seven times on the seventh day, seven time, blow the shofar and the walls will come tumbling down. So it's about trusting God and resting in his promise to do the impossible and to be our provider. Oh, I love the seven. When I read that, it blew up in my spirit. And Robert, I just really just sense, can you just take a moment to speak to that person that's watching right now that they feel like they are in an impossible situation, that they feel like their back is up against the wall. Can you take a moment to speak into somebody who's watching right now that needs to hold on to that truth and the promise of what God says, what he's gonna do, what he's gonna say he did. I just wanna encourage you that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And every problem that you face has a promise attached to it. When you trust God in the midst of the problems, there is a promise that God wants to bring into your life as you are faithful and as you pass the test. He doesn't want you to live out of the lack. He wants you to live out of the overflow. God can do a little with your lot. They brought to them their little, their five, their five loaves and their two fish. And by faith, they gave it to Jesus, to Yeshua, and he multiplied it. And I just declare over you that this should be a season of breakthrough. This should be a season of multiplication and that God should give you the strength to pass the test because he will lift you up as a result. God, amen to that. Let me ask you about a, a chapter you have towards the back of the book that I think is so significant and important for us. Are these miracles for today? Should we expect to see the same kind of miracles that Jesus did or did they just pass away with the, the biblical age? Yeah, I mean, in Signs and Secrets of the Messiah, we talk about so many of the miracles beginning with the water into wine uh, signs and secrets of transformation, signs and secrets of healing, signs and secrets of wholeness, multiplication, so many things. But the reality is, is that part of what we hope this book will do is build in people the faith to believe that God still wants to do miracles, that he still operates in supernatural ways in our lives I believe we need to take Yeshua, Jesus, at his word. He said to his disciples, greater things than these you will do. And we need to step into that. And I can tell you on a personal level, I've seen God do so many miracles. I've seen miracles of multiplication. I've seen he he miracles of healing. And what God did through the disciples he still does today, and he wants to do through you. Jesus didn't do these miracles operating out of his divinity, although he was divine. He didn't do one miracle until he was until after his baptism, when the Holy Spirit came upon him. He was tested in the wilderness, and then he went out in power, the gospel says, and word about him spread. We have the same Holy Spirit that raised him from the dead, and therefore we have the ability to operate in the supernatural miraculous. You know, for someone who's walked with the Lord for a long time, it's exciting to hear about God wants to do something new. In fact, he talked to you, you mentioned about Nicodemus and the miracle of the new birth. Could you just speak to that? Maybe for a believer though, someone who's uh, like you or I or Sydney have walked with the Lord for a while, what new thing is going to spring forth? What does God want to do new in us? 
Yeah, I love the miracle. We talk about the, the, you know, the sign and secrets of new birth. One of the really the greatest miracles, right, is we don't think of it as a miracle, but being born again, having a supernatural spiritual birth is miraculous, right? And so this idea of being born again, the concept really is based out of, you know, Jesus says to Nicodemus, you're a teacher in Israel and you don't understand these things. Well, what should it be understood? Well, God birthed Israel twice. He birthed Israel as a family. They went down to Egypt, 70 and all, but then he birthed them as a free nation. Egypt means Mitzrayim. It means a womb. It means a place of confinement or restriction. It's like the womb. When the water breaks, that's like the woman's water birthing. When they, when they, when you have the plagues in Egypt, that's like the birth, the, the birth pangs, the labor pangs. When they go through the canal, it's like they're when they go through the water, it's like they're going through the birth canal. When they come out the other side, they are born again as a free people. Listen. We get born again when we believe in Jesus with the promise of eternal life. We're filled with the Holy Spirit. But God wants us to have abundant life. That means he wants to not just save your soul for heaven. He wants you to experience wholeness right now. He wants you to experience spiritual wholeness, relational wholeness, emotional wholeness, physical wholeness. There's a promise of healing and transformation on those four levels because of what Jesus did on the cross and by his resurrection, he wants to do that for you. He wants to do it in you. And then he wants to do it through you to bring wholeness and healing and salvation in the lives of other people. And there's no greater joy than being used by God to see that happen. Rabbi, we love what you're just saying about the abundance that God wants us to live in through Yeshua, through Jesus. And as we're wrapping up our time here with you, just really thought of my spirit, can you just speak the Abrahamic blessing over our viewers in Hebrew for us? Yeah, I, do, I just want to pray this prayer. Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you his shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken, healing, wholeness, hope, open doors, expansion, multiplication, abundance. In the name of our Messiah, Sar Shalom, Yeshua Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. <laughs> How wonderful is that? The, the book is called Signs and Secrets of the Messiah, A Fresh Look at the Miracles of Jesus. Rabbi Jason Sobel, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Thank you so much for encouraging us today. Thank you so much for having me. Shalom and blessings. All right. God bless. Wow. Was your life just impacted, Sydney? That was so rich, just taking that all in. And I want to go back and ask you a question. What is your confidence in? Today, hearing that, I can place my confidence, my hope in Christ. And we encourage you to do the same. I took notes sitting, I was like, oh, this is good <laughs> stuff. You know, the year of the open door, these opportunities. But I love that mirror image of what's happening in the Bible and the character of God, what happened in the Old Testament and the New. And it so ties together. And I think there were so many points, but I loved the, the 38 years that he waited and that that 38 reveals his heart, like in the waiting. And like that, that was the same amount of years that they wandered in the wilderness. Like when you see these miracles, and I never um, thought of Moses as the first redeemer, but he is who led them out of captivity and Jesus was trying to get them to see him as their redeemer and it's amazing to me I'm so grateful that he not only came to save the Jewish people that he came to save the Gentile yes. I think my lineage is more along the Gentiles and I am grateful to be grafted in but I just you know I feel today that if you are struggling in that relationship and you're you're hearing this interview and you're like, you know what? Maybe this God of Israel really is the real deal. He is. 
And that's why we exist here at Cornerstone Television. That's why I hope today is so important because we wanna give you that opportunity to connect with God, with your maker. And you might need to pick up your phone at the end of the program and give us a call. Our prayer line you know, is always available to you to pray with you, but to introduce you to Jesus, so important. Amanda, as you're speaking, something that God put in my heart is that there's a captivity in your heart possibly today. Mm -hmm. And you know, as this is Yom Kippur, it's the Day of Atonement. You've heard what Rabbi Jason Sobel was talking about with Jesus. He is the propitiation of our sins. If it wasn't for Jesus, we would not have access to the Father. There is no other name by which we can be saved except through Yeshua, through Jesus. And we see like all these connections in the Old Testament, the New. It's fascinating how God was so intricate in the details. And this is a moment that maybe you feel so much captivity in your heart. Maybe you're bound by sin. Maybe you're bound by mistakes and choices. And today is the day that maybe today you need to go to Jesus and just have a conversation with him, just to pray with him and just beginning to confess. These are the things that I'm doing, Jesus. This is the way I'm walking, God. And I want to turn away from that life and I want to walk a life with you. I love that Jesus is the way. I love that Jesus is the truth and I love that through him we gain new life. And that's what we just want to speak to you today. If that's you today and you want a new life, a new beginning, a new start, you want to start again, that's exactly what this day of atonement is all about through Jesus. That because of him, because he died, he was broken. He was the word that became flesh and he was broken for us. That when we say, I believe in Jesus, we get that eternal gift of salvation, but also the gift of life. And so that is our heart for you today, to know Yeshua Jesus like never before. Amen. We desire that for you. So if that's you, don't delay. I like to hear them say, delayed obedience is disobedience. So just be obedient to the calling of the Lord. But I would like to end with a scripture from Romans 12 as well. And it tells us to hold tightly to what is good. God's word is good. God's word will never fail you. So today, have hope and hold tightly to God. On tomorrow's Hope Today, learn to combat loneliness and uncover the transformative power of friendship. Speaker and author Justin Whitmell Early offers life-changing habits that will help you drift away from isolation and into a life filled with meaningful friendships. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.